真係好開心咯！我以後會錫曬你同埋錫你屋企人咯！我愛你。嗯 Abby Choi was a Hong Kong socialite and model living an incredibly luxurious lifestyle, with hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and millions of dollars in the bank. She had already been featured on the front pages of Vogue and La Ficelle, but on February twenty first, twenty twenty three, while on her way to pick up her daughter, Abby suddenly disappeared. Hong Kong police deployed more than a hundred and fifty detectives to search high and low for Abby. And just three days after she was reported missing, they made a gruesome discovery. This case is one of fraud, corruption, and serious allegations across the board. The culprits: Abby's former in-laws and the man that once promised to love her for better or worse until death do them part. This is the case of Instagram model and socialite Abby Choi. It takes place in the beautiful city of Hong Kong. Known as one of the most densely populated places in the world, Hong Kong is also a major global financial center and one of the most developed cities in the world. Hong Kong has the largest number of skyscrapers of any city, and it is home to the third highest number of billionaires of any city in the world, the second highest number of billionaires of any city in Asia, and the largest concentration of ultra high net worth individuals of any city worldwide. Although the city has one of the highest per capita incomes in the world, severe income inequality exists among the population. Abby, however, was part of the lucky elite. Abby Choi was born July eleventh, nineteen ninety four, to a very wealthy family. The youngest of four daughters, along with her father and mother, the family of six never experienced much hardships. Her parents owned multiple construction businesses throughout Hong Kong and China, and her mother is said to own many properties and multi-million-dollar assets, all of which allowed them to provide a luxurious life for Abby and her siblings. Not much else is known about her family or her history due to China's privacy laws, but on June 2012, Abby stepped into the public spotlight by posting a picture of her Lady Dior handbag on Instagram. Which retails for sixty-one hundred dollars. As Abby's confidence grew, she began showing her face on Instagram more and more. Her following started to grow quickly, and soon she was receiving invites to fancy, lucrative parties with Dior and other designer brands. As you can imagine, her influence and career began to take off. Through her Instagram, Abby took us with her on her lavish vacations to places such as Bali and fashion weekends in Paris. She mingled with celebrities and attended many fancy events. At the age of eighteen, Abby fell in love with Alex Kwan Kong Chi. She and Alex married and went on to have two children. The fairy tale, however, did not last. Alex and Abby divorced three years later. On the surface, everything seemed fine. Abby maintained a close relationship with Alex and his family. They would have regular meetups and often receive expensive gifts from Abby. In fact, shortly after her and Alex separated, Abby purchased a luxurious apartment in Kudori Hills, one of Hong Kong's most expensive suburbs, and allowed Alex and his entire family to live there. The 1,800 square foot home featured four bedrooms. A balcony, marble floors and walls, an impressive courtyard, and many other luxurious details. Abby didn't know it then, but this apartment had sealed her fate. You see, Abby purchased the apartment in 2016 under Alex's father's name for 67 million Hong Kong dollars, which is about 8.5 million U.S. dollars. We may not know the exact reasons why Abby would put the apartment in her ex-father-in-law's name, but one can speculate several reasons. Financially speaking, putting the apartment in her ex-father-in-law's name saved her almost one million U.S. dollars in stamp duty fees. It also meant that her two children now had a safe and luxurious place to live when they were with their father. All of this must have seemed like a good idea at the time, but the reality was that Quan Cao was technically only a trustee of the apartment, and because Abby could prove that she purchased the apartment herself with her own money, she could dispute ownership if she wanted. 
Alex and his entire family eventually moved into this luxury apartment, and it was Abby who was footing the bill for everything. But you have to wonder, how long would she do this for? One year? Two year? Until her kids were adults? All the questions we ask ourselves were surely running through the Quan Kang family. This arrangement became even more complicated when Abby found a new love. In 2016, she and her new partner, Chris Tam, hosted an opulent legal ceremony and wed in front of friends and family. Chris also came from a wealthy family. His father is the founder of a well-known restaurant chain. Abby and Chris went on to have two children of their own. The family of six enjoyed spending time together in their multi-million dollar home, taking vacations to Disneyland, or spending the day aboard their yacht. Abby's career was also flourishing. With her influential connections, she was able to make the jump from Instagram trendsetter into corporate and mainstream media. As the year 2023 approached, the Quans had been living in Abby's luxury apartment rent-free for just over six years. Abby was beginning to realize that she was probably being taken advantage of. She and Alex had been separated for a while, and she didn't really owe them anything. Abby wanted the apartment back, but there was a lot going on with the Quans that Abby did not realize. You see, the Quans were starting to grow broke. Alex's father used to be a respected police sergeant for the Hong Kong Police Department until he was accused of assaulting a woman in the year 2005. Instead of fighting the allegations, he resigned and the Hong Kong PD turned a blind eye. Alex was equally up to no good. He was on the run for several years on account of his actions. In the year 2015, he launched an underground investment scam involving gold. He was able to win the confidence of five wealthy businessmen that invested $5 million each into his scheme. But rather than invest the money into a legitimate business, Alex took off with the money. He also robbed several people and places. All in all, he stole 39 necklaces, 32 bracelets, 13 golden bars, 102 gold, gold grains, 6 pendants, and 10 tails of gold. Alex's brother Anthony had also accumulated a great deal of debt. Years before, when Abby and Alex were still married, Anthony found himself unemployed and struggling to get by. Abby took pity on him and employed him as her personal chauffeur. The two actually developed a close bond and friendship, with Anthony often referring to Abby as his sister. His Instagram features many pictures of the two of them. Abby also fronted multiple store businesses for him, including a pancake store in the city, which he ran when he was not acting as her driver. It is speculated that between these two roles, he made quite a bit of money. But his ridiculous spending habits went through any and all of the earnings he made. You can actually see through his Instagram how he puts up a facade of living the life of luxury, all while drowning in debt. In 2019, he was actually sued by his local bank. Alex's mother was also having financial issues. She was declared bankrupt by the court. Needless to say, all of this created a very sharp contrast between Abby and her former in-laws. The family watched as Abby's success on Instagram climbed and blossomed into a career. Her personal wealth surpassed over 100 million Hong Kong dollars, the equivalent of 12 million dollars. It must have been hard watching her partake on these luxurious events and vacations all while they were losing money. This undoubtedly caused anger and resentment in the Quan family, even though it's obvious that she was not to blame for their misgivings, nor were they her financial responsibility. Tired of being guilt-tripped by her former in-laws, Abby felt it was time for the freebies to stop. This included the free apartment the Quan family was living in. Abby made plans to sell the Kadori Hill apartment and informed her ex-in-laws of her decision. That conversation did not go well, and Quan Kao even threatened to kill Abby if she kicked them out. Abby became very upset about this, 
rightfully so, and sought legal counsel. Despite all of this, Abby was still being considerate of her former in-laws, and she began looking for a new home for them, and even had plans to buy it for them as well. It probably would not be another million dollar home, but all things considering, that is more than enough generosity for her to show. The Quans would repay that generosity by doing the unthinkable. On Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, Abby left early in the afternoon to pick up her daughter from school. But when the final bell rang, Abby was nowhere to be found. Phone calls and text messages from the school went unanswered, causing concern amongst her daughter's teachers and friends. As a social media influencer, Abby was constantly on her phone, and leaving notifications and messages unanswered was out of character for her. Adding to the concern was the fact that all activity had abruptly stopped on all her social media platforms. When she was reported missing, because of Abby's high-class profile, over 150 officers were put on the case. It wasn't long before the first clue turned up. On the afternoon that she disappeared, a surveillance camera on her apartment complex captured Abby wearing a white sleeve top, white pants, a purple handbag, and slippers. The footage indicated she was likely on her way to pick up her daughter from school. Furthermore, the car that picked her up was recognized by local residents as the seven-seater car previously used by Abby and her chauffeur, Anthony. When Anthony and his entire family was interviewed by police, this yielded no results. In fact, the family claimed they had not seen her since the day before her disappearance. The authorities then decided to check the vehicle's GPS records, and what they found was very concerning. The vehicle had been driven to a village in the Tai Po district in Long May, which is a 20-mile drive out of Hong Kong. Dozens of officers were deployed to the area to investigate. They conducted door-to-door -door interviews across the village and poured over surveillance footage from local houses as well as dash cam footage from parked local vehicles. By Friday afternoon, detectives had narrowed the location down to a ground floor flat of a three-story house. However, nothing could have prepared them to the horrors that they were about to walk into. The entire home was unfurnished, with the exception of a well-equipped kitchen. The walls, windows, and floors were all tarped, and inside the refrigerator, two human legs. The kitchen also contained a meat slicer, an electric saw, a cleaver, a chopper, a meat mincer, face shields, and long raincoats. Police also found the stove on with two large soup pots, one of which contained a human skull, several ribbed bones, as well as carrots and other vegetables. The haunting scene left authorities distraught, and as soon as the news broke out, speculation and outrage spread across the country. Upon further analysis, and thanks to footage from the area, the Kwan family was caught acting suspiciously. Some of Abby's remains were still missing, which prompted a search of the surrounding area using tracer dogs, drones, expert divers, and data analysts. The search was extended to a large landfill area, but the rest of Abby's remains have yet to be found. But what happened between the time the cameras caught Abby outside her apartment complex and the day her remains were found? This is what we know so far. Abby arranged for Anthony to pick her up so she could go for her daughter at school. Anthony and the rest of his family used this time frame to their advantage and essentially kidnapped her in plain sight. However, this was not a spur-of-the-moment decision. The family had been planning her death weeks before her abduction. Cal had rented out the village house at the price of 10,000 Hong Kong dollars or $1,300 with the sole intention of destroying all evidence of her murder. After Anthony picked her up, he allegedly knocked her out 
and drove her to the entrance of Lion Rock Tunnel, where Alex was waiting to board the vehicle. Once inside, they proceeded north to Long May, where Alex's father was waiting at the property in order to help slaughter Abby. Once inside the house, Alex, Anthony, and Cal allegedly covered the place with fabric and donned raincoats and face shields in order to protect themselves from the spurting blood. Abby was reported missing by her second husband after failing to return home. When they interviewed Alex, Anthony, and Cal, they raised suspicion by providing misleading statements that did not match one another. On the day that Abby's remains were discovered, the police apprehended Anthony, Cal, and Alex's mother. The authorities were unable to locate Alex, and he became the city's most wanted man. As the manhunt for Alex went on, authorities raised the stakes by offering a 200 million Hong Kong dollar reward for anybody that could help catch Abby's killer. The case became so high profile that the city's elite special forces, the Flying Tigers, were deployed. Alex was eventually seized. He was attempting to flee the country aboard a yacht. He was carrying over 500,000 Hong Kong dollars and $4 million worth of luxury watches. He had bribed a yacht sailor with $100,000 to help him get away. The police have formally charged Alex, Cal, and Anthony with murder. Abby's mother-in-law, Lee, was charged with obstruction of justice. Cal's mistress was arrested on suspicion of helping Alex flee the country. Additionally, the man that was going to help Alex flee and one of his friends have also been charged in connection to the case. Prior to 1993, the death penalty was the sole legal punishment for murder. Now it is a mandatory life sentence. In the days after Abby's death, her Instagram page was flooded with tributes compliments and condolences, while its follower count swelled by around 20,000 to more than 100,000 followers. Anthony Kwong's posts, many of which show him dining out at restaurants or lounging on the deck of a yacht, were bombarded with furious comments calling him a psycho, a demon, and cold-blooded. Chris Tam, the morning partner of Abby Choi, has said that he will continue to care for her four children, adding that he is grateful for her presence in his life following her brutal murder and dismemberment. Mr. Tam, speaking to local media through a family friend, described Abby as kind-hearted and a good person who always wanted to help others. Abby's torso has yet to be found, and her case is currently still ongoing. One thing we can all agree on was that Abby's light was extinguished too soon. If you enjoyed this deep dive, consider subscribing. This is where we take a look at social media related true crime. And if there's a case that you would like to see, go ahead and leave it in the comments.